the doctrine of karma has a bearing on your success or failure. Karma or fruits of your actions is a doctrine or philosophy expounded in Gita. The idea of karma is influenced by a number of assumptions and beliefs, but logical in its conclusions. One of the major tenets of the karma philosophy is that every human action, whether physical, mental or ethical, has a predictable effect. As a result, every action elicits a response, whether favorable or unfavorable. In this world, every good behavior will be rewarded and no bad conduct will ever go unpunished. One's acts or inaction have irrevocable consequences. The punishments and benefits acquired in earlier lifetimes have culminated in the current life. They influence a person's current existence as well as his later lives. As a result, because the effects of an action are irreversible, no one can undo them. According to traditional beliefs, the repercussions of one's own conduct, known as karma phala or results of one's actions, may be transmitted to others, such as one's son, grandchild or an entire community of which one is a member, to the point where even famines and pestilences are historically attributed to the wicked deeds of its rulers or the society as a whole. The Necessity of Rebirth Because every action has the capacity to produce a specific effect Man cannot avoid the repercussions of his own acts. As a man sows, so shall he reap, is an immutable law. As a result, even after his death, the ramifications of his past karma continue to haunt him. The repercussions of one's own acts are what cause him to reincarnate over and over. Belief in one's own personal immortality According to the doctrine of karma, the soul is eternal in nature. Because the individual is doomed to face the consequences of his acts, his self or soul must reincarnate after death to avert punishment. It is not destroyed when the body is destroyed. The body will finally succumb to death and decay and the soul will live on. If a person's acts are excellent, there is a chance that his or her soul will be rescued. If one's deeds are evil, the soul on the other hand will continue to suffer numerous tortures and will never be able to obtain moksha or salvation. The belief in the immortality of man's self becomes absolutely necessary due to the certainty of reaping the consequences of one's own acts. According to the karma philosophy, everyone in this incarnation is either rewarded or punished for their previous activities in exchange for their good deeds or bad deeds. According to traditional knowledge, prosperity, poverty, happiness, grief, intelligence, success and failure, as well as numerous amenities enjoyed by people in their current lives, are the outcome of their former lives, good or negative performances. The philosophy explains why some individuals who plainly deserve pleasure and success in this world are faced with failure and grief, while others who clearly do not are met with happiness and success. Those who subscribe to the karma philosophy think that variations in people's current socio-economic circumstances are caused by variances in their past karma also known as karma phala, the result of his actions. The Centrality of Karma It considers man and his activities responsible for the good or bad circumstances in which he currently finds himself. According to the theory, humanity is the author of its own fate. The premise of the karma phal or past actions is that every karma action has a matching outcome which is fall. As a result, no action goes unaccompanied by a commensurate result. People who are ignorant to the rule of karma frequently blame the higher powers when they are unlucky. According to the Indian philosophical work Bhagavad Gita, 
since they do not realize that their poor luck is the result of their own bad conduct. Karma is virtual and eternal. The concept of virtual and eternal is another factor. The concept of karma has no boundaries. It moves in a circular pattern at all times. As a result, it is infinite and infinite in nature too. It is capable of surviving not only after death but also after the universe's end. It is expected that cosmos as a whole will come to an end. Even in that scenario, the concept of karma will persist. It will live indefinitely and will serve as the basis for the development of a new universe. The power that drives the cycle of births and deaths is referred to as karma. A creature is bound by his deeds or karma but he is liberated by knowledge, the Bhagavad Gita says. To break free from the cycle of births and deaths or to attain the condition of moksha, the final emancipation of the soul, one must first and foremost put an end to their previous actions. The epics urge for the destruction of all desires in their entirety since the desire for sense objects is the motivating force behind the action. Man can transcend his karma and obtain emancipation in this way. As a result, the Gita promotes action renunciation as a means to enlightenment and redemption. Meanwhile, another school of thought claims that it is impossible for a person to entirely refrain from all aspects of everyday living in the actual world. To fulfill his or her personal actions, a person must carry out the tasks that have been given to him or her based on their social status in their life. In the form of Karma Yoga, the Gita presents a fresh meaning of the term Karma. It is the root that leads to the realization of God by a selfless action and the renunciation of one's fruits of labor. You are entitled to work alone and not to the results of your labor, Lord Krishna expounded in the Bhagavad Gita. This means that men should fulfill their obligations only for the sake of doing them and that these obligations must be fulfilled in accordance with one's own role in society. The practice of Karma Yoga involves a high level of moral discipline as well as control over one's senses. Only when man's activities are guided by moral principles will he find himself in the presence of God. He will be reborn and will suffer if he does not do so. By attaining an early insight of oneself and liberating oneself from the bonds of activity, by dedicating all activities to God, one can achieve salvation. As a result, man should fulfill his life's allotted obligations. The realized souls are also expected to carry out activities as per the role assigned to him in society without a desire for fruits of his action. To sum up the learnings, according to the karma philosophy, every human action has a predictable effect. Because the repercussions of action are irreversible, no one can undo them. The soul does not perish when the body perishes but continues to exist beyond death. Everyone in this incarnation is either rewarded or punished for their prior conduct, according to the karma philosophy. Karma is an infinite and never-ending notion. It is capable of surviving not only after death but also after the universe's end. In the form of Karma Yoga, the Bhagavad Gita presents a fresh meaning of the term karma. It is the route that leads to the realization of God by a selfless action and renunciation of one's fruits of labor. Thank you for watching. This is Srinivasan Gopal from Motivation on the Move. If you appreciated the concept, please like, subscribe and share this video.